Thank you. This picture of mine was in Dutch national newspaper Trouw uh, for uh, one year ago on the front page. And it was um, in an article about smartphone addiction. And a few months later, I was invited by TEDx Breda to give a talk, and right here I am. Very proud to be here, very happy. And preparing my talk, my coach and I discovered that my talk should not be about a guy standing over here, sending a message towards an audience sitting in the dark. But my talk should be about connecting. Connecting you all and inviting you all to talk to each other about our smartphone use. Because this smartphone problem is too big and there's no solution yet. I've read many books and I tried many things myself, but there's no solution yet. So I don't have an idea worth spreading yet, but I do have an idea worth trying. And that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to do a sort of social experiment. And I guess you all like that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Could you please all stand up? <laughs> and could you please all show me this beauty of yours, this smartphone? I guess you all have it all with you. Is it there already? Up in the air, please. I see some lights. Yes, thank you very much. How many smartphones are here? I guess everyone has a smartphone. No, oh, <laughs> woo, -hoo. applause for you. Woo -hoo. So you can put them down and stay uh, standing. And right now, I'm going to invite you to make couples because we need each other for this uh, exercise. So please pair up from this end to that end, from this end to that end in couples, in sets of two. Just look at each other and form couples. Do it right now, please. <laughs> look at each other and keep looking at each other. All right, thank you. Keep looking at each other. Can we do it in silence, please? <laughs> Sorry? You really like connecting, don't you? <laughs> Are we all coupled? All right, great. Then we're going to do the next step. It's very easy and it's safe. You won't get any harm of this. Listen very carefully. We are going to exchange our smartphones for a while. <laughs> so, in a few seconds, you will just, without any talk, exchange your smartphones and be sure you will get it back. So please do it quick. Without talking. Are you ready? All right. You will get it back later on. Sit down for a while. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, how does this feel to be separated from your own phone? <laughs> I know, Keith Bucker did it to me in 2008. But in uh, 2016, I started taking pictures of people using smartphones in public areas. And I took quite many of them more than 500. And as you can see, I took them all from very up close, maybe two, three, four meters. And that's why I could not escape from talking to them. And we had pretty good conversations. And in these conversations, I learned one big thing. We are all addicted, or at least most of us 
and me included. And I took many pictures and I went to many places. <laughs> and everywhere where I went, I saw the same faces. And after talking to all these people, and after talking to lots of experts and reading piles of books, I came to the core of what smartphones do to us. Professor Sherry Turkle of MIT calls it multi-living. Smartphones enable us to switch between lives. They make it possible to move from one life to another, from wor one world to another by just one click, and to another world and to another world. By simply one click, you can move from a very boring meeting with your boss to a very lively chat with your soccer friends on WhatsApp. Or with just one swipe, you can be together with your future girlfriend, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. <laughs> And of course, it's, it seems great to be traveling with the speed of light, just with your smartphone, all over the world. But it also had its downsides, because if you are there and there and there, what remains over here? And since your short-term memory, your attention is only able to be at one place at a time, nothing remains over here. And when I took this picture, I realized that it was causing bigger problems than just a few traffic accidents. We are actually de-socializing humanity. We are disconnecting our future. And I did many things to try to stop my addiction. I switched off all notifications. I switched off the colors of my screen. And I installed this app. It's called Moment, and it measures your daily use. And I started with more than four hours a day. And right now, you can see, it's about 44 minutes, less than one hour a day. But I have to be honest with you, I'm cheating. <laughs> because I moved my addictive behavior from my smartphone towards my laptop. <laughs> and so I installed a site blocker, but again, I found a workaround and just, I'm switching it off when I really need to feed my addiction. And I bought this one, a retro Nokia, prepaid, no functions, but I still need my iPhone to take a picture of it and to share it <laughs> <laughs> with the rest of the world. And um, I even sold my house in Groningen and decided to move to, the, to this phone-free zone in the middle of nature. And even that didn't work. No, just joking. But, <laughs> um, but the whole problem is, this problem is too big. It is too big. If, if you're human, you cannot solve it by yourself. It's, it's a too big addiction. And this is why it is a bigger addiction than alcohol and drugs. It's everywhere. It's a sort of, it has become a sort of multi-super tool. We can use it as a light bulb. We can use it as an agenda to communicate, to do our banking, to find our way, to find a date. Uh, we can do everything with it. Second, it's free. After you got one, you can use it infinitely. So you don't have to pay any money anymore, no threshold, just keep on using it. Third, there's always more. There's always more news, there's always more pictures on Reddit, there's always more movies on YouTube or Netflix. It's hyper-social. We keep pulling each other in. So if you decided to quit WhatsApp, there's always a friend who invites you back to one of these silly groups. And fifth, all the apps are addictive, and they are designed to be addictive, because all the big companies are fighting a war for attention, and they are using the highest knowledge to gain your attention. And they're using artificial intelligence to reach that. And is there a solution? No. I started my talk that there is no solution yet. And um, since sharing is half of the solution, sharing the problem is half of the solution, 
that's what I'm inviting you to do. After my talk, there will be a 20 minute break, and I'm inviting you to connect to each other and not immediately get back to your phone, but first have a talk to the person you exchange your smartphone with. And I have two questions prepared for you to talk to, to talk about. And it's very simple. Just talk about your personal relationship with your smartphone. Because I think this is the first step for a solution. So I thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope you will enjoy your connection. Thank you for now. <laughs>